Welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry to keep you waiting this long, but I've been busy doing a third attempt getting from Norway to Itterkortumit in Scoresby Sound, Greenland. I love it! <laughs> At my first attempt, the Scoresby Sound was packed with ice. The second time, I was stopped by COVID already in the Faroe Islands. And I said that I tested positive. As I strongly believe that consistency will get you success, I set out for yet another adventure to try reaching this goal. Some weeks before departure, I had spent a couple of weeks in hospital due to some flaring of my annoying ulcerous colitis. Eventually, my doctor said that I was good to go. So with no time to waste, I wiped the dust of my 46-year-old Contessa 35, Tessie, to give it another shot. So here we go. I had now sailed 814 nautical miles from Norway through Shetland and Faroe Islands before landing on the majestic islands of Vestmannaeyjar. After spending one day exploring this incredible wonder containing debris of volcanic eruptions creating the most eye-catching nature and even animal-looking creations, it was time for me to move on to the next goal which was Reykjavik, 120 nautical miles away. I only had a 24-hour weather window, giving me perfect southeasterly downwinds almost all the way. So with no time to lose, I was ready to go again. You will be on film. Uh, it's okay, <laughs> I don't know. Thank you so much. All right, welcome back to another video. And now we are leaving uh, the beautiful uh, Vestmanaia. Look at this uh, enormous mountain hanging over us like this on our way out. It's really a real spectacular entrance to this place. Reykjavik now on Iceland. Well, this is part of Iceland as well, but uh, it's an island five nautical miles outside. And it's a 24, 22 hour trip, I, I think, to, uh, to Reykjavik now. It's gonna be a pretty spectacular trip, so enjoy the ride. We left the volcanic naturally made entrance, slided around the green covered cliffs, while spectating the amazing archipelago surrounding Vestmannaeyjar. We were bound towards the rough west coast of Iceland. And about to pass another mind-blowing spectacle on our way. So while motoring en route, let me introduce you to my sponsor NordVPN. I've been using NordVPN for quite a while now. Along the way, I'm posting videos and pictures on my social medias for my followers to enjoy the ride. It's a relief to know NordVPN is protecting all my devices 24-7 through hiding my IP address against online intruders. Wherever I am, I can choose from 5,200 servers in 59 countries to make sure I get the best speed on the market. It's also compatible with Windows, Android, iOS, MacOS and Linux. It's very easy to use. Just download the app, create your account and protect your online privacy with the click of a button. 
So head over to nordvpn.com slash Erik to get your exclusive NordVPN deal here. Offering 4 months free after subscription. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Getting close to one amazing spot now. It's called the Tri Dranga Lighthouse. You can see it in our bow. And I can't believe I'm here. I've been looking on photos for many years of, about how it looks and it's just mind blowing. So let's go and check it out. Wow. Six nautical miles west of Vestmannaeyjar sits the world's most remote lighthouse called Tridranga Lighthouse. It was constructed in 1939 at a height of 34 meters and was then only accessible by climbing up the rock. Today a helipad is constructed to make it accessible by helicopter. As a big admirer of lighthouses, this was a very special experience along the route towards Reykjavik. As I kept going, the wind and weather suddenly came up. So it's uh, pouring rain outside. So mine, I'm inside and just relaxing and uh, wow. it's about 20, 22 knots of downwind, so that's beautiful. And what's good about being inside, I can watch the screen, everything uh, that happens around me, just uh, with the charts and uh, I can see what's going on on the mast top. Uh, the view in front of the boat, perfect, and uh, so I feel really safe, but of course I go out every now and then and just have, have a look around, just to see what's happening, but not much happening around here for the next hours, I think. So just to let the boat stare herself. The wind has uh, picked up to uh, 25, 27 knots now and I still have uh, uh, the full gen uh, Geno out. Um, it's just too much. The boat has reached uh, its first full potential a long time ago. It's about 7 knot hull speed and uh, yeah, it's just stupid to have this much sail up. Let's, let's furl in the, the sail. rain it's important to keep the cameras rolling to keep this video moving yeah my boat is not a luxurious thing I can promise you she's a tool to get to Greenland but what an amazing tool she is
my uh, fry pan fell down and the handle broke off. So it might be a problem when I'm gonna lift the thing off the stock, but okay. While Tessie were sailing along her course line, without me really knowing, my health was about to take its own course change. I was too embarrassed to tell it to the camera, or maybe I just wanted to put a lid on it. I had been struggling with pains in the skin around my tailbone for some days, and this evening my body suddenly opened a leaking hole in the skin in the painful area. I could not believe it, especially after just recovering from two weeks in the Faroese hospital. I didn't know it then, but today I can tell you these were all first signs of my ulcerous colitis slowly transforming into Crohn's disease, which is an even angrier version that can cause chronic inflammation all the way from the mouth to the rear end. Anyway, happily ignorant, we pushed on downwind along the vast Icelandic coast. With heavy rain outside, a long straight course line ahead, and little to no traffic for miles away, I spent some hours inside resting and monitoring the outside environment through the cameras mounted in the masttop and cockpit. I have to say this is a very useful technology for my kind of single-handed sailing, letting me feel a lot more safe. Take a keel inspection. <laughs> you can see the breeze uh, falling from the actual uh, teak floor for the six-year-old wood that is uh, dissolving, and you can, see, uh, you can see the pieces of it here falling off. And water is coming from the from the mast, uh, from uh, from rain and uh, seawater down here and to here. It's nothing I really can do about it the way it's designed today but uh, I just have to uh, pump, pump out some water and when I'm in port and uh, yeah do my best to keep it out of there. That's it. So, we are just around the corner of uh, Iceland and uh, we are going to have to push northwards now, change our course, or else we're going to end up somewhere in Canada. So, we're going to change the course on the hydrovane. Okay, let's go. So downwind we went for some hours before the daylight again set in. And we can make our last course change towards Reykjavik. Way too much uh, for sale, so let's reef the Genoa. First side of land and Reykjavik is over here now. So the ocean, the waves has flattened out because of the close to land. So that's nice. So just to take the last miles. Get shit done. Wow. That's amazing. Oops.
think we're there. Okay, so that's Reykjavik. This is a huge place. It was much bigger than I anticipated when I got into the harbor here. It's it's massive and it's very industrial and uh, we are situated just beside uh, the Oprah house. Huge Oprah house, beautiful building. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna stay here now for a couple of days. Uh, a couple of issues. Uh, I have had some uh, problems with the health after that double surgery uh, it's now swollen up a little bit again so i'm just taking it easy uh, when i can and rest and, uh, and be ready again uh, usually it gets uh, gets better after some time so so i just have to take care and um, but that, what's nice to be on a, on a boat when in that condition is that i have everything i need uh, in short way around me with the medications and uh, all yeah uh, it's not far away i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of myself so that's uh, Vestmanna Eja to, uh, to, uh, to Reykjavik. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next episode. So long. So keep joining me along my adventure towards Greenland. In the next video I'm heading for the beautiful little village of Grundafjordur. So that's Grundafjordur. But to get there, I had to bash through some heavy cold winds. I love it! To sail around the enormous volcano of Snefjellsjökull. So follow me on Facebook or Instagram for news and updates. Support me on Patreon or PayPal. Also check out the super thanks button under the video to help me out. Get your NBJS merchandise following the links in the video description. Maybe you can even find a Christmas present or two. And remember to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and a comment for motivation and to get my videos up in the algorithms. Thank you for watching, I'll see you soon, Eric.